my Rob Holman impersonation. I gotta stay fresh. Okay, start handing me your, your rods there. I'm gonna clip these lures off. Just washing my plugs. No, we're not touching the plugs. We're just washing. of human scent and it's it's only a couple hundred ah, maybe 400 yards of river and there's one little 20 foot hole in it and first thing in the morning I, I tend to get a lot of fish in here if it gets really windy out there which it is today a lot of times I'll spend more time in here but we're gonna go through there troll up through it turn around troll down through it we get one great It's time for the Northwest Fishing Reports. Come along as we travel to hidden gems and fishing hotspots around the Northwest. You'll see a little of everything as we fish with top guides on their home waters and bring you the latest in tackle, tactics, and techniques to help you catch more fish. With Aaron Borg, Mike Carey, and Rob Holman. Now, it's time to go fishing. Hey everybody, it's Rob Holman with Northwest Fishing Reports. It's early May, I'm on the Wind River with Toby Wyatt of Real Time Fishing. We're going after Spring Chinook today on the show. Keep watching, it's gonna be a good one. So the Wind River comes into the Columbia by the town of Stevenson, and there's a hatchery here, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know the numbers, but it puts out a good amount of a good amount of fish. They get a good return, and it's decent enough return that they uh, let you have a two fish limit every year. So you know, anywhere you can get a two fish Springer limit, that's that's a big deal. It's I pull it every time I come in here. Like maybe every other time I catch one. It's not sure. like super hot, but. It's always uh, a good spot to start in the morning. Gives you a little break from the wind. Sometimes if I'm getting really beat up out there by the, the elements, I'll come in here and make a few passes. So we're switching up? Yeah, I'm going back to shrimp. Plugs were a no-go. Just a, a shrimp double hook setup. I use this rubber band to uh, keep the head from flaring out. Got a spinner blade and a flasher. It's called a Leo flasher. And then I wait. No, okay. You don't. Look. Got it. Yep. And we're in a narrower slot. It's full of debris. So we're going to be constantly adjusting. seem to be quite as uh, chaotic here at times and we hit a good day here where there's hardly any people
looks like it's a, a wild one, Hillary. We're gonna have to release it. Yeah. It was fun on the fight though, wasn't it? It was. They're they're that, strong fish. That boat, that fish does not want to come to the boat. No, it, it doesn't let up the entire time. It just keeps fighting and fighting all the way to the boat. So what do we got there, Toby? You got a fin on there, right? Yeah, it's it's actually, it's probably a hatchery fish. And this is what we call a mist clip. It's not fully formed, but um, uh, you could get ticketed for it. So the best thing to do is to release it. So here we go. Nice job, guys. Fun. I think we found some, Toby. Yeah, so uh, second pass through there, boom. Fish on. Another nice one. This, one. this one's a hatchery. No doubt about this one, huh? Alright. Hit a shrimp again. Pretty fish. From meat in the boat. Yeah. Hey, we've got more Wind River right after this. Hillary, I think we make a pretty darn good fishing team. What do you think? I think you're good luck, Mr. Hamilton. You're good luck. You always reel <laughs> in the big ones. That was, he must have like hit it with his tail or hit it and left and then all of a sudden he just come back and crushed it. That was cool. Yeah, we haven't had a bite like that. It's always been flat out. Bam! That one kind of lollygagged. He's reeling off. Listen to that. He's just reeling her off.
That's another great fish. Wow. All right. Pretty much slamming them. Yeah, man. That's, uh, how many is that? Five? Four. Five in the... Well, we threw one five. back. Five was... with four in the cooler. Yeah, and then we missed a few others. Pretty hard to, uh, get much better than that. No, this is a lot of fun, dude. It's a lot of fun. These are really nice fish. Such a unique fishery, beautiful scenery on the Columbia River. This is a true Northwest classic. And the Northwest Fishing Reports are really committed to trying to bring you highlights from these top fisheries with top guys like Toby to help you catch some more fish. Yeah. <laughs> We're about out of time for today. Toby, it's been an awesome day out here, man. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for bringing us out. Yeah, it's a great day of fishing. If guys want to go out and fish with you, Toby, how do they do that? How do they get a hold of you? I can go to my website, which is realtimefishing.com. That's R-E-E-L. Or you can call me at 208-790-2128. You can also find some of Toby's fishing reports on northwestfishingreports.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, please smash the like button, share, and subscribe. If you're watching us on TV, be sure to like our Facebook page, find us on YouTube, or visit NorthwestFishingReports.com. I'm Rob Holman for Northwest Fishing Reports. We'll see you on the water and online. Tying on the Blademoor Roadrunner with a little trailer hook there. Go. <laughs> yeah, I think we got like a sturgeon or something going there. <laughs> this could be that 23 pounder we were just talking about. Good morning everybody, Rob Holm with Northwest Fishing Reports. We've got something neat today. We're doing some tackle testing with the Okuma rods and reels. We're out here with Mark Bush. That's not a uh, Twisted Waters. Check this out. Who get the net? That's a big walleye. It's a great way to start the morning. We're netting this. <laughs> wow! Wow! And he pops right out. And he pops right off. Look that's at that. That's a release. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Woohoo, man, that's a nice one. <laughs> so, kind of lighter gear we're using there, guys. We are, we've got a uh, 20 pound braid and I've got about an eight pound leader on here. Oh, I got it. And that's uh, an Akuma rod you That got? is, that's the new Akuma Deadeye Pro. These are walleye specific series. This is a 30 ton graphite rod, very sensitive. As soon as you touch that bottom, it was a quick lift and it was already on. Actually, I thought it was snagged right away. But... Seemed like a real sporting fight though. It's, it's... It did. We actually thought it was a sturgeon. That guy held me down there, but we got him up. Nice smooth drag. Kept that fight alive. It was great. So this is a, this is a medium light rod. This is a six foot six, one of our new dead eye rods, uh, ultra sensitive rod. The, the thought there is, like I said, I've got a 20 pound uh, braid on there and I've got about an eight pound leader. Real sensitive, 30 ton graphite. So every time you feel that little nick there, you're gonna be able to swing on that fish. It's usually a fish. Um, you know, very sensitive. Uh, these walleye, they don't bite hard. It's not like they're gonna slam it like a bass or like a salmon or anything else. A lot of times it's just a little bit of subtle difference. So on that lift, as soon as it hit the bottom, it felt just a little bit different. Then that's it right there, just set the hook. You put her in the boat. Put her in the boat. That's what we gotta do. We're gonna do a whole bunch more of those today. <laughs> right on. Nice, nice little sturgeon there. <laughs> See, it happened. It happened. Did they have teeth? Uh, yeah, no, they got spines, dude. Okay, so yep. can I stick my finger? Especially in those that? babies. Yeah. They're, I've never seen one that small. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? I get the record for the smallest sturgeon caught today. But I'll tell you what, this Okuma handled it like a pro. Yeah. Nice one. There we go. Woohoo! Nice. I got me a walleye. <laughs> Go 
got just a little bit of fog, but no wind. It's gonna be a good day to tear up some nice silver kokanee. Hey everyone, welcome to Northwest Fishing Reports TV. I'm Mike Carey. I'm a guest today with my friends Randy. We also have Luke Hatfield doing the guest guiding here on Merwin Reservoir. And we've got Barry along as a cameraman and a fourth angler. So join us as we go do some winter kokanee fishing on Merwin Reservoir. Getting ready to go out and kill some Merwin kokanee. We'll give them all we got. Is there any particular color? I know like on Chelan, orange seems to be the, the, the thing the kokanees like. I mean, I've tried everything. Orange seems to be the, the color they like. Is there a color here on Merwin that the kokanees tend to gravitate to? Out here, it can vary day to day. Um, our go-to colors are pink, orange, and lately I've added purple to my arsenal, and purple has been a killer out here. It's funny you should say that, because I was thinking of starting with purple today, so I think I'm going to stick to my game plan. I brought some of my favorites along to go along with these guys' tackle, and we'll put a little bit of everything out. The one thing you can learn with kokanee fishing is, is get as many different things as you can until the fish tell you what they like, and then give them a lot of it, because they're going to consistently hit that same thing. So we're getting all our lines out. We're probably going to run around four to six rods once we're all said and done. So um, getting the rods going and we'll be fishing any second. Lead core is going out right now. There we go. Just, uh just switched over too. We took the uh, we took the gold maggots off and put the corn on. Luke had got a fish on the orange corn. I had experimented, put on some pink gold maggots. So we just pulled this in, put the corn on, and ten feet down is where I was at on this. Look at that rod. Nice fish. Yeah, yeah baby. Nice. There we go. Fish. There we go, broke the ice. Nice there early kokanee to start the day off. Lift, lift, lift. Keep lifting. Got it. Another beautiful, beautiful. fatty fish. This is normally a summer sized fish. This, this year is going to be a beautiful class of fish for Lake Merwin. Oh for two on the planer boards. They work great getting your gear away from the boat, but when you take that board off, you can lose fish at that instant. I felt the fish come off before the board even got to the boat, so we'll just keep plugging away. Every rod is hooked to fish now, so we were waiting for that last one to go off, so now we just got to have every rod get a fish in the boat. <laughs> That's the hard part. There you go, Mike. There you go, baby. There he is. Hold up. Fish on. I didn't think I had this guy at first. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Pretty much it's tough. He doesn't want to come in. There Thank you, you Luke. Yes. <laughs> That's why you need a guy who knows how to net fish. What a beautiful Look at though. this. That is sweet. They're a beautiful grade of fish this year. Summer's gonna be off the hook. My take on the, the fishing in the winter conundrum, because a lot of people are like, you're killing next season's fish early and they're not as big a fish. But I like to think that we're culling them so that we'll, the fish that are left will have more food to eat and be a bigger grade as we move more into the summer. So there's different schools of thought, but I don't like to quit fishing either. So winter fishery allows me something to do when the uh, rest of the rivers are blown out and the salmon season is closed. So, um, that, and it's a little bit more challenging during the winter to fish kokanee. You gotta work a little bit harder for them. Here, fishy, fishy, here, fishy, fishy, here, fishy, fishy. Here, fishy, fishy. Where my... Okay, no. okay, Fish on. What uh, location are we at, Luke? Off of 
Woodland Park Village. I can see all the houses right across the reservoir from us. And uh, there's a area here where the, the old river channel sort of creates current and the fish like to stay and hold against that current. And it's an area that we like to troll through quite Ooh. frequently. Oh man. It's a pretty good size. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good fish. I'm gonna do the dance and get you up first. Yeah, this is a good fish. Yep. We hit it really well here. It's winter, but it's nice, 50 degrees. Kind of misty, wet. Not bad at all. You're good. You're, you're good. Just keep it coming. I'm just making sure. Oh, oh God. God! Man, come on, Sorry. man. Yeah, when you when you Are came you over, it, it me? Into it. <laughs> Ten feet from the boat. I'd, I'd already checked. Ah. I'd already checked to make sure that line was off of it. Fish on the downriver. Yep. Here's a late morning Big. fish coming in. And in the net. Again, you can just see the quality of the fish here on Merwin this, this winter. Beautiful shiny fish. Probably about a 12. 12 and a half, 13 inch fish. We've got a beautiful backdrop here. Uh, the day is done for our fishing adventure here on Lake Merwin, Winter Kokanee with Luke Hatfield. Luke, thanks for taking us and being our guest guide today. My pleasure. We didn't catch a ton of kokanee, but uh, we probably lost as many as we caught. We put a dent in the population so that those ones that come out this summer will be even bigger. There you go. We'll see you guys on the water and online.